What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you something a little different, and that is talking about CRPG gaming specifically on the Steam Deck. Recently, I was finally able to acquire one after several months of waiting, and I got a Steam Deck for one very specific reason. You see, this channel normally reviews various games, and I tend to specialize in CRPGs. I cover a wide variety of games in general, but CRPGs are something that really speak to me, and thus I cover them very thoroughly. As someone who reviews games, the primary reason I bought the Steam Deck was simply to talk about Steam Deck compatibility for my reviews, which are almost exclusively on PC, as I don't really tend to play any other consoles. So naturally, when I got the Steam Deck in, one of the first questions I was thinking of to myself are, how do various CRPGs play on the Steam Deck? And over the course of about a week or so, I've been testing and playing a variety of games. I've got about a dozen specific ones to talk about, as well as some general thoughts about it across the board. We're going to start with the general stuff, stuff that is probably relatively common knowledge, but I think it's important to talk about it in this context, starting with the Steam Deck's ratings. You see, each game on the Steam Deck has a couple of different ratings that refer to how well it actually plays on the deck itself. These range from great to not recommended. Great means that everything that game is supposed to be able to do works as intended without having to do anything extra on your part, and to quote Todd Howard, it just works. Then we have the playable status. Playable basically means you can absolutely play the game and probably have a good time, but there are elements to the game that cause it to be a hassle in some way that you're probably going to have to work around. Typically speaking, this requires, say, keyboard inputs via the Steam Deck's virtual keyboard, or potentially even use of the magnifying tool to actually blow up text that is otherwise very, very small, or other things like the controls just not really working particularly well. Then there is the unknown status. This basically means that Steam doesn't have enough information about the game to tell you one way or the other. Pretty straightforward. And then finally, we have not recommended. Not recommended, I've only seen on a few games and this is largely because those games just did not run well specifically. In the cases in which I saw it and when we're going to talk about it, you could play the game, it just ran very poorly and the Steam Deck seemed to struggle to actually present the game, basically. Next up, I want to talk about the controller layout. So obviously, the Steam Deck does not have traditional keyboard and mouse controls, and because of this, the device offers various ways around different types of controllers. It comes with several preset layouts for individual games, and in some cases, these are chosen automatically for you, but you can also kind of adjust the layouts themselves. And the layouts essentially just kind of dictate what the joysticks do, what the triggers do, what the buttons on the back do, that kind of thing, and how they correlate to in-game function. However, something that I don't really see mentioned a lot but I think is really cool, is you can actually go into these layouts and edit what individual keys on the Steam Deck do specifically in terms of, say, if I press the right trigger, does that get mapped to, say, a left mouse click? And that feature alone makes a lot of games playable if you're willing to spend a little time adjusting the controls to make it playable, which is one of the most important things to know when it comes to gaming with CRPGs on the Steam Deck. And last but not least, some games are not on Steam. So what do we do there? Well, as I'm I'm sure many people know the Steam Deck does come with a desktop mode. However, this is separate from the gaming mode. And I mention that specifically in the context of these reviews and everything, because the game mode of the Steam Deck is basically just playing games, period. You can't really run any extra software. Whereas if you switch over to desktop mode, you can go download non-Steam games, add them into your Steam library, and then play them through this way. And this will actually enable you to effectively use the Steam Deck as just a regular desktop PC, albeit on Linux. I mention this because through this method, a lot of non-Steam games that would not typically be compatible compatible can be made compatible by downloading and installing various compatibility modes, which you can then set up Steam to actually recognize. This will also allow you to do other things as well, though, such as download OBS and record footage, for instance, which is where most of what you're seeing on screen is coming from. And then last but not least, before we move on to talking about some individual games, it is worth mentioning that some games just straight up will not run in desktop mode, but will work in gaming mode, for instance. And this is the case for a couple of games we're going to talk about today, and in those particular cases, I'm going to be showing footage from previous reviews that I've done on those CRPGs, as opposed to footage from the Steam Deck itself. For instance, Fallout 1 
won't run in desktop mode, which means I cannot actually record footage of the game, but it will work in gaming mode. Not exactly sure why, but just kind of the way it rolls out. Now that we've got kind of all the basics out of the way, let's start talking about individual games. We've got about a dozen or so to get through, and I've got a few notes on them individually, so you can kind of get an idea how this tends to work, and then we'll kind of wrap up towards the end. So the first one on the list I want to talk about is actually a non-Steam game, and it is Neverwinter Nights 2. So games like this, games that you cannot get on Steam, for instance, can still be gotten on the Steam Deck, but it's going to take a little work on your part. For instance, to get games off of GOG or the Epic Games Store, you have to go to desktop mode, open up the Discover app, and then search for the Heroic Games Launcher, which will then serve as the launcher for Epic Games or GOG, to then pull those games off of your account, and then you can add them into your Steam library afterwards. But some things to note with this particular approach are you're usually not going to have access to cloud saves, because again, non-Steam games, so you'll have to play just specifically on the Steam Deck for those playthroughs. And then the other thing is controls. For Neverwinter Nights 2 in particular, the Steam Deck version of the game has just controls that are all over the place. But if you remember, with a little bit of work, we can go in and and map the controls of the Steam Deck to what we need them to be. So it's absolutely doable. The other thing about this game in particular is that it highlights the fact that sometimes you have to download other things onto the Steam Deck to get them to work. In Neverwinter Nights case, it will not run properly if you just get the game off of GOG and then fire it up. What you actually have to do is then go download a sort of compatibility version of Proton on Linux and then go tell Steam to use that compatibility mode when it tries to use Neverwinter Nights 2, but that's also not enough. You then have to go through an app called Proton Tricks to download specific DirectX files that are required to actually make Neverwinter Nights work. So in cases of non-Steam games, you can typically get them to work. However, it's going to require work on your part. In order to get Neverwinter Nights 2 to run, It took me about an hour or so of fiddling around and downloading extra programs to get it running properly. But it will run, and once you've got it running, you still have to actually mess around with the controls and get those sorted out. But it is a possibility. Now, that brings us on to a sort of different kind of game, not a CRPG really, more of a TRPG, but I wanted to mention here because I covered it recently, and that is Troubleshooter Abandoned Children. I wanted to talk about this game in particular because it has an unknown rate. And the issue I had here was almost strictly about the performance of the game. I'm not sure what about this game makes the Steam Deck chug, really, but for some reason the Steam Deck just does not run this particular game well. Of all the games I've messed around with and tried, this one easily ran the worst and is at the same time one of the least demanding games that is on this list outside of the really old ones. But this particular game is a turn-based tactical RPG that's got relatively easy graphics. However, the Steam Deck really just struggled to run this title, and I'd be hard-pressed to tell you why outside of maybe some sort of optimization issue. And I mention this because some games will just randomly have a really hard time running on this piece of hardware, even when you can get games that look amazing like Elden Ring, etc. to actually work, which is an odd one. But moving on, let's talk about Baldur's Gate 1. Now, the Steam rating for this one is playable, with the main problems being text entry specifically. I actually messed around with Baldur's Gate 1 a good bit on here, and yeah, honestly, the biggest problem this particular game has is actually anytime you need to type up on the screen, because you have to open the virtual keyboard, and for some reason, Baldur's Gate 1 really doesn't like it when you do that, and tends to kind of freeze up a little bit, which leads you to have to put in names like one letter. But again, still technically playable as long as you don't mind naming your characters like J. But beyond that, that particular game ran super well. Though I was running the Enhanced Edition, which saw a lot of updates to the game in general. As for the original, I'm not quite sure. But the Enhanced Edition runs incredibly well on the Steam Deck with just a rating of playable. In fact, of all the games on this list that we're covering, it ran, I would say, probably the best. Then we have Disco Elysium. This particular game has a great on-deck rating, and I would tell you that doesn't really surprise me too much, because at the end of the day, this is effectively a narrative game or a sort of visual novel in some ways, and really all you do is run around talking to people and interacting with the occasional object. And while the actual controls for interacting with things can be a little difficult, beyond that, Disco Elysium does actually run great on the Steam Deck. 
which I think can largely be chalked up to its frankly easier controls, which we'll talk about in our summary. So from here, let's move on to Divinity Original Sin 2. This one also has a rating of great on the Steam Deck, and I would have to agree. Really, the only problems I ran into with Divinity Original Sin 2 were the loading times. They were consistently quite long, but once you actually got into the game, it ran great. The controller support was amazing. You didn't have to fiddle with the controls. It was all kind of already set up for you, and you could just jump in and play Divinity the original sin too. My cloud saves even worked, which isn't a huge surprise as this particular game has particularly good cloud save and cross-play support. And then we talk about Dragon Age Origins. This particular game has an unknown rating, and I would tell you there were a couple of issues with Dragon Age Origins, but overall it worked quite well. I would say the main thing for this, and this is one of the games that I have to use regular footage for because this is not a game you can play in the desktop mode at all. For some reason, it just would not work. It would not go full screen. However, if you fire this up in game mode, it seems to work perfectly. And in some ways, it actually worked even better than when I was running it on my PC, where I've had quite a bit of trouble running Dragon Age Origins in the past. However, despite this being a Steam game, for some reason, the cloud saves did not want to work for this particular title. So I couldn't load up any of my old saves. For whatever reason, they just didn't want to work. The other part of this one is the controls actually. So there is a community layout, meaning that there's a set of controls made by the community for this game that you can use. And for the most part, it's okay, but the controls are probably going to need a little bit of work on your end to make this fun to play on the Steam Deck, but it is absolutely playable. Then we have Fallout 1. This is another one that you have to run from game mode. For whatever reason, on the desktop mode of the Steam Deck, this thing will not start. But once you fire it up in game mode, it actually works pretty well. The main issue here is honestly kind of just the age of the game, which is strange because it's pretty much the same age as Baldur's Gate 1. But for whatever reason with Fallout 1, especially when it comes down to the smaller screen size on the Steam Deck, it becomes incredibly difficult to make out what you're looking at. And on a larger screen, like a PC screen, I never really had this issue when I was reviewing this title. And it's really my only complaint about Fallout 1 on the Steam Deck is that it was just kind of hard to see what you were looking at due to the aging graphics and the relatively small screen of the Steam Deck. And in some ways, that might just be me growing old, to be honest. But nonetheless, it did run quite well. I just, you know, had a hard time playing it because everything was incredibly small and hard to see. And next up, let's talk Wrath of the Righteous. This also has a playable Steam Deck rating, and this mostly runs pretty well. However, it will kill your battery on the Steam Deck very quickly, which is something I noticed with this game more than the others. However, it does again run very, very well. I didn't really have any problems with this outside of one crash to the main menu that happened one time. Beyond that though, the controller support recently added by the game's Enhanced Edition actually made it a breeze to play on the Steam Deck. I tried it before and after this update actually, because it kind of happened in the middle of some of my testing. And prior to the controller support, it worked, but it was a little fiddly with the controls. But with the controller support that was added by that update, it became incredibly easy to play it just with the default controls. And in fact, it actually runs really, really well. I was even able to mess around on some of the higher difficulties on the Steam Deck, which surprised me because I kind of was thinking that wasn't going to be a very good experience, but it is very, very playable. But one issue you will absolutely run into here is the text. The text of this game is very small and you're likely going to have to use the magnifying glass sort of tool that the Steam Deck has to blow things up if you can't read it yourself. And then we have our next game, Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. This one also has a playable rating, but is another one that the Steam Deck seems to struggle with. As I noticed with Deadfire, the frame rate on deck was very choppy. I would occasionally get sort of freezes and slower clips. And while the game itself seemed to run fine enough, I did notice some performance issues with this one that could make it an issue, but by and large, you could play this title. Now, that brings us to our very last one on the list, and that is Celasta, Crown of the Magister. This particular game really struggles performance-wise and with the controls. This game actually has a not recommended rating on Steam Deck as well, which I think is probably pretty apt because this game ran pretty poorly. For starters, the controls, of course, don't line up, but again, you can adjust those. But the main issue here was really just the frame rate. Like, this game just didn't want to move. And the controls, even once you get them working, tend to be a little unresponsive. So while the game will technically run, I can honestly say it was just not a 
good experience. So it definitely kind of earned that not recommended for the Steam Deck tag. However, it does run pretty well on PC, of course. Now, from here, let's kind of take all of that information and summarize. Now, some of this, I think, is pretty obvious when you think about it, but basically, a lot of the newer CRPGs tend to run pretty well, especially when they have a lot of features that are designed to help them out in a case like the Steam Deck or have a console port that gives them controller support, which helps a lot of their mechanics just work a little better anyway, at least on a sort of handheld device. But one issue that does kind of come up and is pretty consistent across games is that the text and very just small details etc can be very hard to make out or read and with more text heavy games on a much smaller screen like that this can become an issue and then we have still other games where they're not available on steam but if you take the time to get them working they will work quite well and then in some rare instances like divinity original sin 2 they work incredibly well without you having to do much of anything at all you just load it up and get going so with all of that said i think the broad takeaway from this sort of experiment for me was basically that CRPG gaming on the Steam Deck is overall pretty solid. However, it does come with some of the issues that would be pretty obvious for playing on something smaller like a Steam Deck, like the general readability of what you're seeing, controls not mapping correctly on what are typically only PC games, the occasional game that just will not work due to performance problems, and while there are certainly nuances to all of these things, I think what surprised me the most is that in almost every case here, while the performance might not have been the best, I could get the game running and stable on the system, which surprised me, honestly. There were cases where I just didn't think it was going to work, but in almost every single case, there was some sort of workaround where I could almost always play the game. And given the incredibly wide range between all these games in terms of their age, mechanics, etc., that was probably the craziest thing to me, was that, again, some of this stuff just played on there to begin with. But admittedly, it is a bit inconsistent. However, I do think there's a great case to be made for CRPG gaming on this particular bit of hardware, and I think now that it's out and developers see it gaining popularity, it's likely to improve from here. But even out of the gate, it is better than I thought it would be, and something I definitely think people should give a try. So, all of that said, guys, I certainly hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about these games and the Steam Deck down below. But regardless of any of that truly thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it may you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day